This is Dr. Dave, and in this video I want to show you why what you may think the answer to your project one is not the correct answer. So at this point you've done probably tech one and tech two and probably tech three, and the next thing is to map out your strategy. I'm going to give you some time in class to do that, but you should be thinking about it ahead of time. So what you see in front of you is kind of a typical worksheet. You've got your linear salary, your exponential salary, and probably right now you don't have them intersecting in the first 10 years. Now feel free to modify your salary so that they do intersect in your first 10 years. Most of you probably are going to work 10 years or less for the same company and let's allow for that possibility. If you've been utilizing fills like I have up here, so you'll see right now that in this cell I multiply the previous row by 1.025 that means the salary plus 2.5 percent of the salary and all I'm gonna do here is change that to something different I'm gonna try 7 hit enter and now go ahead and click and let's drag that down and what you'll notice is now that the exponential salary, the percent raise salary, crosses somewhere around five. And anywhere in the middle of this graph around four or five is probably a good place. So now that I have that, I'm going to look at this and think about that point of intersection. So we think it occurs right about five. And if you look here, let's see, salary one is higher in this row right here. But then when we go down to the next row, salary two is higher. So that point of intersection is between about four and five. If you think about it, when you look at all the previous years, you've always made more with salary one. That means at that point you might think, ah, salary two is going to change to being the better deal. But remember, you've always made more for the first couple of years. So if you were to look at your accumulated salary, you'll have much more than salary two. And in fact, even when you go beyond the point of intersection, the other salary has to work a bit to catch up in terms of accumulated salary. So what I want to do is show you how you can incorporate this idea of accumulated salary into your, uh, your Google Sheet. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the graph and I'm going to move it over so I have a little bit of room. I'm going to be working in columns D and E here. So at the top of this first column, I'm going to type accumulated salary one. And notice how it runs outside of the box. So I'm going to click on that cell again, go to format, text wrap, and say wrap that. So it stays in that column. I'm going to do the same thing over here with E. So accumulated salary, but now it's going to be two. Like I did before, I'll go format, text wrapping, and wrap that. So let's go ahead and calculate out the accumulated salary one. That means I'm going to utilize the numbers that are in column B. So at the end of the first year, the accumulated salary is just going to be that 20,000. So I'm going to type equals and then click on that 20,000 and press enter. Now to get the next salary, the accumulated salary after the second year, I need to take the previous accumulated salary and add on the 21,000. So I'm going to type equals. I'll click on cell D2 and I'm going to add to that what's in B3. Hit enter and it takes the 20,000, it adds the 21,000 and gives me 41,000. Now let's utilize the power of the fill to do all the rest of the calculation for us. So I'm going to grab that bar, holding my mouse down, I'm going to drag it all the way down. And you'll see what it's going to do is it takes the 41,000 and adds 22,000 to get 63, the 63,000 to 23,000 to get 86. And so I can see in 10 years time, I will have accumulated $275,000 worth of salary under salary one. 
Now let's do the same thing for salary 2. So I'll click in E2, I'll type equals, and at the end of the first year, you'll have accumulated what's there in C2. So I'll click on that and press enter on the keyboard. Now to get the salary at the end of the second year, I'll type equals. I take the previous accumulated salary and I'm going to add to that the salary 2 during the second year, which is over here in C3. Press enter and it takes 18,000, adds 19,260 and gets 37,260. Now let's go ahead, click on the cell E3 and we'll drag it down to do that same calculation. So remember when we were looking at that point around four or five? So if I'm here at year four, when the salary right here for salary one is just a little bit bigger than salary two, I've accumulated $110,000 worth of salary versus about, oh, 103, 104,000. If I go to the fifth year there, I've got 25,000, but now the other one's caught up and surpassed it. But look at the accumulated salary. We're still ahead on salary one. Uh, salary two has not caught up. If I keep looking at these lines, I'm going to see it takes a little while here until finally right down here about year eight or nine, I'm $245,000 worth of accumulated salary here. But now the other one is $248,696.06. So I can see that between year eight and nine, here and here, the salary two has now accumulated more over time. And at that point, if I was going to work longer than that, then I would take salary two. Now you can also go ahead and graph this. And so what I would like to do is I'd like to graph column A, column D and column E. So I'm going to go and click on A1. I'm going to hold the control button down and drag. Now I'm going to let the mouse button go. I'm still holding the control button. I'm going to click on D1 and drag it and notice how now it goes ahead and highlights that column. Same thing on E1. I'm going to drag that down. And now I've selected the three columns I want to graph. So next, I'll say insert, chart, and now it's just a matter of getting the right chart type. So I'm going to go over to chart types, and I'm going to say use column A as labels. I'm going to do a line chart, and as soon as I do that, now I can see those two graphs going up. Remember the Oh, it's hard to see over here what's going on. Well, we'll fix that in a moment. And it's got some strange labels on here. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is do customization. And I'm going to give this title to the chart, accumulated salary. Scroll down. On my horizontal axis, I'm still measuring the years. And now I'll click here and go to left vertical and say accumulated salary. Of course, I need to spell that accumulated right. And that's in dollars. Scroll down a little bit more. And somewhere along here, I should find the legend. Ah, there's my legend. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to put that along the top. The reason being is when I put it along the top, I can actually see my names right here. So I've made sure now that my accumulated salary is in blue. Accumulated salary 2 is in red. I'm going to go ahead and insert. Inserted it right over the other one. So I'll grab it and drag it down. Notice that the exponential salary, which was salary two, was red there. It's also red down in the other one. If I scroll down here a little bit, I can probably put this in right underneath the other one. And now I can take a good look at it. So remember we said right about eight or nine? 
that the accumulated salary two went past the accumulated salary one? Well, that's that point right in there. When the accumulated salaries intersect, that's what's interesting to us because that means that over those first years up to about eight, at this point when they cross over, you've accumulated the exact same amount of salary, whether it's salary one or salary two. If you go past that, now salary two is gonna give you more money overall. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is have one of your team members or maybe two or three to go ahead and make modifications to their graph so that you get a graph above that intersects about three or four and then create maybe an accumulated salary one here so you can pick out precisely where that point of intersection is. So in our case, it's probably easier to go up here and look at the table. You can see that uh, here in year eight, it was 215603.80. 216 but when I go to year nine now uh, we've got three thousand oh, more than three thousand dollars more in salary two compared to salary one so this is the kind of strategy that you're going to want to put it into your infographic what I'm expecting to see for your rough draft is that you've put together an argument that's based on accumulated salary it doesn't need to be pretty or anything but I need to be able to look at it and see what your numbers are and understand that yes, you're working with accumulated salary and not something else.